A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part nine. The steam unions that pass through the smoke box are not a tight fit and are difficult to remove without damage. In this video, I show a couple of simple machining jobs that improve the fitting of the unions to the smoke box. The smoke box is quite large. Here's a view of the inside of it. Initially, I gave the smoke box a coat of heat resistant paint and I didn't remove the fittings. There is no way of stopping the fitting from spinning round when you put a spanner on the nut on the inside. This clip shows me using a very large pair of mole grips to clamp the union fitting on the outside while I remove the nut on the inside. At this stage of the job, I'm really pleased that the smoke box is large enough for me to get my hand inside it entirely. This clip shows the pair of steam union fittings, and both of these show damage from using the mole grips on the outer part. There's only one real answer for this, I need to remachine the damaged parts. Here I'm fitting the one that has the most damage into the chuck of my Myford ML7 lathe. It's a very simple job to just turn away the damaged part, which of course reduces the diameter at this point. I cleaned up the most damaged part first, followed by fitting the other one into the chuck. By doing the job this way, both of the parts end up being the same diameter. I use some wet or dry sandpaper to clean up the outer diameter of the parts and a piece of folded emery cloth to clean up the edges. These steam unions are shaped and the reduced diameter fits into the respective holes in the side of the smoke box. Without altering the position of the lathe tool, I'm turning the second one to the same size as the first. And after doing that, exactly the same as I've just shown, I use wet or dry for the outside edge and some emery cloth for the corners. Here's a before picture with the parts badly damaged. And here they are after the machining. The problem is, if I refit them, they're going to be marked again. I need to mill some flats on the edge of these so I can use a spanner. And the other thing about milling flats for a spanner is that it won't be so obvious that the component doesn't follow the curvature of the smoke box. Over now to the milling machine to mill some flats on either side of the unions. For this, I'm going to use my rotary table. Here I'm checking that the end mill that I'm going to use is long enough so that the part clears the chuck. Here's the union fitted into the chuck of the rotary table and I'm currently rotating the table and getting it back to zero. You don't really need to do this, but mathematically I find it much easier to calculate zero to 180 than say 320 to whatever that would be. Maths has never been my strong point. Now it's time to move the rotary table into the correct position so that the milling cutter mills a flat on one side. I'm purposely using a small milling cutter. This is an end mill and it's a quarter of an inch end mill. I'm using a small quarter of an inch diameter end mill for a specific reason. This double union is made from brass and it's not very strong and if I clamp it too tightly in the chuck it's going to be damaged. And more so if I use a really large heavy duty milling cutter I'm trying to show something quite interesting at the moment. It's very important to always cut towards the work with the milling cutter rotating in the correct direction. Here I'm using the rotary table not as a rotary table. I've just moved the cutter to the other side. I think it would be a better idea to use it as it was designed to be used and rotate the component. Before rotating the chuck, I'm taking a finishing cut on this side again. You will notice that when the cutter moves from left to right, the finish is good, and when it moves from right to left, it's not so good. Dragging the milling cutter in the wrong direction is not a good idea. It isn't likely to dig in and destroy the work by going in the opposite direction after taking a very fine cut, but as you can see, the finish isn't so good. In this clip, I've rotated the table 180 degrees and without making any adjustments to the position of the milling table, I'm machining the part in one pass, and here one more time, this is what happens if you go in the wrong direction. I repeated the process on the other fitting. To save time, I've omitted the machining of the other side, that's already done. And now both of the fittings have flats at each side. The next part of the job is the big clean-up. I remove the tool marks using my one inch belt sander very carefully and here I'm using a stiff brush just to clean up the parts and get rid of any swarf. 
Even though it may not look like it in this image or into camera distortion, these parts are quite accurate. I'm checking the dimensions using my adjustable spanner, first on one and then the other, and these are fine for what I need them to be. There is one more job left to do on both of these fittings, and that is to reduce the length of the part of the fitting that goes into the hole in the side of the smoke box. These are currently a bit too long, and when you fit the nut and washer, it doesn't tighten the part onto the wall of the smoke box. Once again, it's a really quick fix. Using my Myford lathe, I just shorten the part of the fitting that goes into the hole in the smoke box. First on fitting number one, closely followed by fitting number two. And now when these are bolted into the smoke box, the nut and washer will pull the fitting tightly into position. And by using a spanner on the flats, I really will be able to tighten up the nut on the other end. When you build machines of any scale, you have to build in some facility for easy servicing. I think some of the modern car manufacturers could do with taking a leaf out of that book. Here is the fitting in position on the side of the smoke box before I milled the flats. This is the before picture. And here is the after. The fact that I've milled flats down each side means that it's not so obvious that the fitting does not follow the curvature of the smoke box. It's Christmas Eve, Saturday the 24th of December 2022. I will end with a short video showing the Star Wars nativity that I put together for my grandson. This was inspired by the set of three wise stormtroopers. A Merry Christmas to one and all. And I would like to conclude, as usual, by saying stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.